Good morning, people. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're talking in uh, the book of 1 Peter, that great character that loved Jesus and served Jesus and walked with him. Also denied him, didn't have a perfect life, but, uh, but he restored with Jesus and became greatly used by God. You know, God is the God of a second chance. I hope you've noticed that, especially as it relates to the life of this man, Peter. But Peter, in his letter, he writes in chapter 2 and chapter 3, and he uses some intriguing terminology. He uses the word good seven times in those two chapters. He never uses the words, you'll notice, great. He uses the word good. Now, you will have heard me say this before, but it bears repeating, is that greatness is overrated. Goodness, however, that's the way to go. And Jesus was often teaching on this subject. Just read Matthew 5, read the Beatitudes, and you read about the fact that goodness comes first before greatness. You see, greatness is reserved for something that takes place in heaven when we reap the rewards of a life that has been lived doing good. Now, in the passage that he's talking about here, he says, do good things, say good things. Uh, live out of a good conscience. He, he gives you seven examples of what this goodness should look like. And I wonder sometimes in a world where greatness would appear to be the big deal, where the whole world just wants to be great. We send our kids to school because we want them to become great. We send our kids to university. They've got to become greatly educated. You've got to do great in this world. And I think we've settled for the... the uh, the, that sort of golden calf thing where we put the golden calf up there and said everybody that's the big deal we all want to become like that we want we want to shine we want to we want the world to look at us and say man what a great person well we don't want to blow that bubble too much but I don't think we, we can blow it enough blow it up because it says Jesus says goodness is a whole bunch better than greatness read the teachings of Jesus Hear the stories he told. He told stories about good Samaritans. He didn't talk about great Samaritans. Jesus is into goodness. And so as we look at our own lives today, doing good deeds, saying good things, living out of good consciences is simply the evidence of the first part of what we studied this last week, where we are, we are his children. We're a royal priesthood. We're a nation, a holy nation belonging to God. Those are beautiful things. Now, if you want to know if you are living like that, have a look at the evidence. And the evidence would suggest that it's good stuff. That as you live good stuff out of who you are, that's the evidence to the world. The world is looking at everybody and saying, let's be great. But Jesus here, and Peter here, twice he talks about good being good enough to tell the world that you are who you are. Tell the world that you are a son of God, that you're a believer of God, not by words, but just by being good. Don't strive for greatness, people. At the end of the day, you'll find it's like a mirage. It's like a, like a thing in a desert, that thing where it shines in a desert, a mirage. And when you get there, you find, hey-ho, nobody's home. It's just a, you were chasing after the wind. Let's be people that chase after goodness. And trust that greatness is the reward that is still to come. You guys can have a good day. Bye-bye.